I want to welcome you guys to the Social Media Tips webinar here by Transfer Express. My name is Dave Connor. Uh, I've been in the apparel decorating industry for well over a decade now, uh, and pretty much any way you could put ink on any substrate, I'm talking stickers and banners and posters even, uh, I've been there and done it. Uh, as well as, of course, plastisol screen printing, direct-to-garment printing, uh, a lot of all-over sublimation, as well as, yep, you guessed it, heat transfer technology. And I'm so thrilled uh, in just the technology and quality and the accessibility of heat press and uh, heat printing in general. I started way, way back in the day screen printing shirts on my kitchen table and went through a whole bunch of hassle and work, screens, inks, emulsions, uh, ink viscosities, and water base or plastisol, cleanup chemicals, uh, photo bulbs for exposing the emulsion on the screens, and then screen mesh, squeegee durometer, off context, all of that stuff uh, is just, a, it, I could have saved so much time and so much money just jumping right in with plastisol screen printed transfers like our goof proof here at Transfer Express. I absolutely love it. Looks, feels, washes, and wears like a screen print. And as well as the technology that's new and evolving, of course, direct to film. Uh, and our Ultra Color Max transfers seem to be a very, very hot topic. Decorating on uh, cotton, polyester, cotton poly blends, tri blends, and even garments with spandex in them. So, uh, kind of limitless possibilities of what you could do with that product. Really, really cool stuff. But we're not here to talk about transfers too much today. We are here to talk about social media tips and uh, your t-shirt business. So regardless if you are a custom decorator or running your own t-shirt brand, we have tons of tips in here. I see Kim. Hi from New Jersey. Um, Thomas, uh, what's the take on the DTF, uh, DFT trend? Uh, DTF, we are 100% on board. Stalls and Transfer Express are both leaders in the industry. We brought the first commercially viable direct-to-film to market. And in my opinion, now, maybe a little biased, but I'll tell you why. I believe RDTF is the best on the market. Now, uh, that is in terms of feel, quality, and durability, number one off the bat. And I've heard that from other people at some of these trade shows, like uh, in the, uh, the show intro, when we're talking about uh, seeing all of these direct-to-film options out there, not all direct-to-film is equal uh, in terms of especially the feel, but even attendees will come up and say, wow, this feels incredible. This isn't like anything I've ever uh, I've ever really touched before uh, in terms of the direct-to-film. It doesn't feel plasticky. It's not thick. It's heavy. It's not glossy. It has that nice kind of matte finish uh, and is an incredible feel for a digital print. And sure enough, it is. But I will say our Ultra Color Max apply at a hot peel. So uh, 290 degrees, low temperature, number one. So you could get away with printing on those spandex, the rayons, the tri-blends, those heat-sensitive garments, 100% polyester, without getting platen marks or scorching. That's the number one thing, so that low temperature application. Number two, it's a hot peel. So nice, quick, easy, efficient application. No waiting for it to cool down, nothing like that. As soon as the press opens, you could peel the carrier away with confidence, and it peels like butter. With that and that hot peel, there is no need for covering and repressing. There is no second step. There is no waiting. One and done. I like to call it the one press wonder because it truly is. You see it adhere to the garment and for the longevity and the durability of it. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I have stuff that now is a year and a half old. So even while we were testing the DTF before it was available to the general public, and I say DTF, uh, I'm talking about our Ultra Color Max direct to film transfers uh, here at Transfer Express. But I have stuff, yeah, that was prototypes and they still look absolutely fantastic. And they had to have been washed 50 times uh, by now. So just me personally, I've seen that wash testing durability firsthand. And like all of our transfers here at Transfer Express, we have them all independently tested uh, to 50 plus wash dry cycles to meet that industry standard right there uh, for print durability and longevity. But all right, let's jump right in. Let's jump into these social media tips now. now I love that question. And that's what these, these uh, webinars are all about is answering questions and helping your business thrive. But we're going to get into our social media stuff here uh, and get ready to go. So of course, social media tips, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So you should be using social media for your business right now. Bar none, it is one of the easiest ways for customers to find you uh, and find your target audience. So uh, tips for posting on Facebook and Instagram is going to be one of our agenda points here. And I mentioned Facebook and Instagram because those are the two uh, largest, and I want to say most accessible social networks. TikTok is, I think, getting up there to being one of the most popular in, in terms of active users. But as total users go, Facebook still has, I believe, the largest audience of any one of these networks. Now, it's going to matter on your demographics too, where 
where you're going to kind of set up your shop to be your main home base. I recommend spreading out because a lot of the content now is moving towards short form video content. Thanks, TikTok and Snapchat. But uh, we're not going to talk about Snapchat too much today because I haven't seen a lot of success from businesses on it. A lot of interpersonal connections, uh, but uh, definitely not really the best uh, for T-shirt printing businesses per se. But Instagram, Facebook, definitely uh, those. And I'm going to talk about kind of the audiences of each one of those. We're going to talk about how often you should be posting. Now, of course, in a perfect world, you should be posting all the time. Uh, but there are some certain set limits that posting a lot could start to hurt you. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about here, too, that's going to be a recurring theme throughout this presentation is going to be quality over quantity. So uh, how often should you post is kind of a mute point uh, if you're just posting just to post and it's not content that people are actually uh, looking to have and it kind of just is annoying in your feed when you're scrolling on social media and you're, ah, get out of here. I want to hide this. I don't, I don't want to see this stuff anymore. So you want to make sure you're posting relevant stuff, number one, and then we'll talk about how often you should be posting, which those relevant things and some ideas for you are all built into the presentation. So hopefully you should walk away today with a nice primer, some great inspiration that you could uh, kind of take and use for your own t-shirt business. That's my goal here today. So uh, keep that in mind as we move through here. Now we're gonna also talk about, yes, is TikTok right for you? I know TikTok is not right for me, but that was what I originally thought. I thought it was all just silly dances and the kids doing crazy stuff that goes viral that you see on the news every night, but it is not. There's a lot of great engagement uh, in, in just that short form video content. I think there's a stat somewhere that's like, 50 or 60% of uh, TikTok users say they discovered a product and purchased something because they saw it on TikTok. There's that whole hashtag that's like, TikTok made me buy it. Uh, and here at Transfer Express, I could tell you the story of what we went through when we get over to talking about TikTok as well. Uh, and we fully embrace it now. There's so much more to it than just the silly TikTok dances, right? So you, you can tell I don't do it, right? I don't have the dance moves that these kids have uh, to be able to be posting those viral TikToks. Not me, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some simple strategies that we could use uh, if you're thinking about getting on the platform or you already are on the platform. I've seen lots and lots of success uh, from apparel decorators there, finding a new audience or embracing their current audience. So really cool stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about creating mockups that you could use as posts, not only for product listings, but posts to try to sell your apparel. And some of the examples that I'm going to show you here today of actual Facebook posts uh, that kind of fit exactly uh, what we were thinking when we were outlining this and we went looking and like the stuff that got good engagement uh, and talking to decorators what works. Uh, we'll show you some examples of what did it. So some of it is super, super super high and polished. Some of it is stuff that you could create uh, for absolutely free online right here today. And then we're going to touch a little bit on ads. You could buy social media ads through Meta Business, whatever they want to call it now. It used to be Facebook Ads Manager that managed ads on both Facebook and Instagram. But now it's like Meta Business Suite uh, where you could actually still purchase ads. And of course, if you're running your own business page right now, you've probably seen the offer from Facebook that where it shows you your ad and says, do you want to boost this post? and reach X amount of new customers, yes, we could even talk about boosting your post as well. So primarily, we want you to find a larger audience, talk about your services, and build your business using these social media tools that we'll talk about here today. Um, Sarah just got UPS, the transfers, and the apparel order both at the same time on the same day. That's awesome planning, and you're ready to start printing. So get, on, get printing while you're listening to us here today, all right? Sarah, you're going to have to to loop back in there near the end of the uh of the hour here and let us know how uh, how many shirts you've printed already. <laughs> how is it is it going? Uh, Barb asked, uh, which one's considered DTF? We talked about direct to film a little bit. That's Ultra Color Max, available for six cents a square inch, any size design from a quarter inch, so a little tiny quarter inch by a quarter inch, all the way up to a gigantic 22 by 22 inch sheet. Just humongous uh, print capabilities. I personally just did some orders for an event that I'm going to this weekend uh, with a 12 and a half by 13 inch print. Kind of expensive uh, in terms of it, but I needed a low quantity. And man, it looks absolutely incredible. And on the full back of these hoodies, I used the Port & Company uh, PC78Hs. Man, it is just, it's one of my, the favorite products that I've ever printed in my uh, 12, 13 years now in the printing industry. I'm absolutely in love with it. Super awesome project that was made possible and made at that price because I still was able to offer them for well under 30 bucks. Uh, 
and yeah, just absolutely incredible stuff. So uh, made possible by that Ultra Color Max is what we'll be talking about here. So let's jump right in. And uh, I, I mean, maybe we could let us know just just uh, in the in the chat section here on the on the side. Let me know if uh, if you're currently using social media for your business by just saying yes. Or if you're not, if you don't have any profiles and you're not using social media, say no, because it's going to be great to get a little nice uh, kind of poll of our audience here to see how many people are actually utilizing it and looking to just kind of make it better or uh, looking to get into it in general. So I see a lot of yeses, a lot, a lot of yeses coming in here, um, some no's in here. So this is perfect. So uh, if you are just getting started, wow, a lot of yeses, Wait, uh, a few no's in there. This is great. Yeah, not converting much, Simone says. That's, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, when I find time, Kirsten, that is <laughs> absolutely it. Yeah, about to start using social media too. Instagram and Facebook. Um, yeah, that is absolutely, uh, yeah, awesome. This is kind of exactly where where I saw it. Kim says using it a little bit. Melissa, Monica, Crystal, Christy say yes. Um, so yeah, awesome in here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, Mary asked, what was the number of the PC product that I liked? It was the Port & Company PC78H, if I recall correctly. That was a the just the pullover hooded style. Got them in black. It is kind of like an athletic fit. I did the hoodie review video, and it was one of the ones that I put on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think it was the second hoodie that we mentioned in that video. Uh, and it's nice. It's comparable to maybe the Gildan 18, uh, 18500. So that like kind of lower cost hoodie, but it feels it's such a tight weave on the fibers that it feels almost like it's, you know, like a polyester dye. It's a 50 50. So it is a, a poly cotton blend, but it's just so nice and smooth. Feels really, really nice. Um, so awesome. We got a good mix of people using social media right here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that this is this is perfect. If you are just starting out. Uh, this guide right here, uh, I'm going to ask Mike to put it in the chat section right here uh, because there's a link here, stalls.com, social media for your t-shirt business is the link that you could go to. Uh, but Mike will Mike will link in here uh, for the actual like downloadable click link for this ebook. It's great because it's filled with so much uh, of just checklists that you could go through to make sure that you're setting everything up. It even has image sizing uh, for those profile photos, for the timeline photos, for the cover photo at the top of a page. So there's there's tons of stuff uh, in this guide that is really, really helpful for you if you are just, if you haven't set up the profile yet, or maybe you did set it up, it's going to be great to get this guide and be able to go through there. Boom, I see Mike just put it in the chat right there. Uh, and if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube or something down the road, uh, we'll make sure that we have that linked in the the chat or, or in the description or the comments below as well. But for you guys listening live, uh, Mike just popped it up right in there. But this is an awesome guide. Basic setup checklists, what needs to go in your profile? So what is the pertinent information that you need to bubble up and put it in there? Uh, mostly it is tell people what you do in your services and give them a link on how to buy or at least how to learn more. Always be thinking about that next path. What is the objective of your social media page? You want them to learn more about your business. You want that brand awareness. You want that exposure. And you ultimately want to give people a source to funnel into your website. Maybe fill out a form to get a custom quote. Or if you're running your own brand, make sure your products are featured forefront and they're able to be able to clicked and downloaded. Something that always comes up when we start talking about social media ads, people are like, I buy so many ads, I waste so much money and nothing converts but they never, they thought of the ad and like the ad is fantastic, but they never thought of those actions after the click. When they go to their website, are cl prices clearly marked? Does it dump them into a category or a selection that like a lot of things are out of stock? So make sure you're thinking about all that stuff as it goes through. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the ad section here. Um, uh, yes, Sarah, this is, this should be updated. I believe it's the fifth edition, uh, as recent as December of last year. So just a couple months old, uh, not too much has changed in that realm, but a lot of, uh, all of the dimensions, we always are updating this guide to keep it on the forefront because if anybody who's been on social media for a little while knows Facebook likes to change things all willy nilly, right? So we definitely want to stay up to date on what everything is, uh, is on there. So, uh, absolutely perfect. So, uh, basic profile of cover photos, your privacy and page settings. So you want to make sure it's open, especially from a business profile, you want to make sure it's set up and open for all. But this guide's going to walk you through all of it uh, and even some tips for social selling uh, and some uh, kind of some ways that you could put things on the marketplace and list products on both Facebook and Instagram very, very easily. Um, the link's going to be right here. Uh, if you guys just scroll down a little bit in the chat section, uh, you could see Mike dropping that link right in there uh, or just navigate over to this site, stalls.com slash social. 
hyphen little dash media for your t-shirt business. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, can't see link. Maybe Mike could drop it back in there for you guys as we start moving forward. Now we're going to go into some basic tips for any social media use. So these are kind of like the, the basic primer points and these themes that you're going to see come up and be mentioned more and more often as we start diving into some realistic examples uh, to look at this stuff right here. So um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you guys could get that link there and download that guide. It is awesome. Absolutely love it. So number one here is define your audience. That means that you're choosing the right platform based on your demographics. Now, of course, Facebook skews a little bit older. It has the largest audience, uh, but a lot of that is buying power. So people who are making purchasing decisions, if you're a custom decorator, they're most likely going to be on Facebook versus Instagram. And they are completely different formats too, although Facebook has kind of merged them together to be a lot of ads. Am I right? A lot of ads on both of the platforms, but of course on Facebook you could get a lot more of the uh, of the text out there where the image necessarily isn't featured first. It might be where your eye draws to first, but just the format of uh, Facebook being uh, that mix of text, video, and uh, image driven, whereas Instagram is increasingly visual. So. Uh, it is a l increasingly video and a lot of short form content, the stories, uh, but a lot of Facebook uh, browsing is done mostly in the feed. Whereas uh, with Instagram, you have the reels to scroll through, you have stories to go through, as well as your general feed, which is predominantly visual or almost exclusively visual, little bits of descriptions on there. So uh, find the one that works the best for you. If you are a running a brand targeting 18 to 24 year olds as your target demographic uh, that you've defined that you are you're making, you know, adventure shirts for or some streetwear or something that uh, fits exactly with that audience or maybe some nice oversized uh, kind of candy pastel shirts for like uh, college kids. Definitely want to be more on the Instagram, maybe even TikTok uh, kind of realm. You're not necessarily going to be dabbling a lot in Facebook or like LinkedIn as a social network if you're looking for that. Now, if you're a custom decorator, maybe getting on LinkedIn, friending up a lot of the local businesses in your area that would be needing those print services is a great way to get your services out in front of them. So find your audience because that's going to help you guide uh, the best best place to set up your, I don't want to say set up your, your you know profile. I say set up your home base, make that your primary one, but still be out everywhere because you know there's a lot of crossover in these audiences from, you know, I say like Facebook skews a little bit older on a demographic, maybe not the 18 to 25 year olds, but there's tons of 18 to 25 year olds that are still on Facebook too. So you want to make sure that you're kind of you're setting up across all of them, but you do have that that consolidated home base. Now, of course, creating engaging content is there. That's what I'm talking about. That is quality over quantity. So informative, engaging and relevant content. So stuff that you know your audience is wanting to see. Not, uh, you know, if your audience is let's just use an example here. Polar opposites, right? Your audience is uh, a maybe faith based. You're targeting uh, families and young people for, uh, you know, any vacation Bible schools and uh, just services, spiritual stuff like that is your main target audience. That's great. You aren't going to, uh, you know, you necessarily don't want to be showing as, you know, if you're a custom decorator, you don't want to be showing the metal bands that you're printing for uh, to show them that content. So you see, you want to be making relevant content that you're serving up for that specific audience. Now, if you service both of those ends of the spectrum uh, as your audience, you might want to tighten that in for be a, a little bit more laser focused on your marketing. But you could see there that is a perfect example of like the the metal band T-shirts are not going to convert a uh, you know a church crowd. Um, and a uh, uh, faith-based shirts are not necessarily going to attract the business of heavy metal bands or bands in general. So you want to be showing the stuff that uh, that the audience is going to relate to. That was a super bare bones, broken down version, but I think it illustrates the point uh, pretty good there. So um, that's with the, the content. So quality over quantity, you want to make good stuff. Uh, and your phone that you have in your pocket is more than capable of producing high resolution quality content. Number one thing that I always recommend is right here on your phone. I do it all the time. I'll touch my camera lens. Okay. And then it gets all smudgy. You pull it out, the photos all blurry and you're like, man, I have an awesome phone in my pocket, but it, it looks like garbage. Just take your shirt, 
wipe your lens before you take any photo, okay? It's gonna give you a much higher quality result. My number one tip for taking any video or photos um, in your, <laughs> Michelle, that comment, cleverly, cl clearly not a striper fan <laughs> or ghost, I guess. <laughs> that kind of still plays into a lot of that imagery, um, but yes. <laughs> Thanks for that one in there. Uh, but post with a goal in mind. So just like kind of what I was talking about, if you want to go try to attract a certain audience, post with a goal in mind. What is the objective of your post? Don't just post just a post. Think about what you want them to do. Is it, hey, I have this great guide for uh, bands and how they could use merch to make more money. And you want to use it as a lead generator or just see who's interested in your products or start a conversation perfect and you're able to do that. Maybe you want that to inspire or just make somebody smile, laugh. Memes are awesome. Just funny little things uh, that people will be like, ha, ha, that's funny. We post a whole bunch about apparel decorating on our Facebook page uh, and they seem to go over well because our audience, uh, our followers there on Facebook understand the plight of, you know, if it's a meme of, you know, uh, Jack Sparrow running away from people with uh, last minute apparel requests. Like, oh, just a couple pieces. It's gonna lead to more work or whatever the, the caption was on it. It's just, it's fun and it relates to the audience. Um, so just think about the objective there. Do you wanna talk about your services? Are you trying to sell a certain style? Or like, if you're running your own brand, look, I just launched my brand new spring line, browse it right now. Putting that call to action in there is most often overlooked. So being able to put a call to action and some of the examples we're gonna look at here uh, actually do put that in there. And some of them uh, kind of skirt around it in a way that you are interested enough to wanna learn more and you're gonna make that click if you are a fan or familiar with that brand. So that's what this is. Being consistent is the next step. Tip, step, the next, uh, you just want to make sure that you're developing a consistent schedule to be posting uh, at a regular cadence. And that way your users uh, are used to seeing your stuff. It keeps you top of mind and it keeps you fresh in people's feeds. You don't want to overdo it. Like I mentioned, we're going to talk about frequency here in a little bit, uh, but make sure that you have a consistent uh, posting schedule. That's how you're just going to consistently grow an audience. If you are posting two or three times a week and you're posting on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, every single day or every single week, continue to keep up that exact, uh, that exact, uh, uh, cadence and and you're going to see your following grow. I have never talked to anybody as it relates to marketing or social media who has developed a cadence and stuck to it uh, for over a couple months that did not see an increase in their followers or their users. Uh, I don't want to say it directly relates to sales because of course that uh, that depends on the actual type of the business, but you will get more followers by just posting more and more. One thing that gets you the most followers though is engaging with your audience. This next step that we have down here, uh, respond to your comments, respond to DMs, go and search hashtags or on like Instagram, you could go to the explore feature and just type something in, type in small business or small t-shirt business and start interacting with other things or like say you're making dog apparel, right? Or heavy metal band apparel, start getting in the community. The more that you're engaged in there, the more that people see your brand name start popping up in comments or they see in their notification feed like, oh, Dave's metal band t-shirts commented on my, on my post. And it's like, oh man, I love this music. Just checked it out. I'm so glad I found you guys. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna go, who is this person? And they're gonna click on your business profile and be like, oh, well, we needed t-shirts, right? This doesn't happen if you don't engage with other people. So engage on your own posts and engage on other people's comment. Don't just go and I'm sure we've all seen it where it looks like bots or it's just copy and paste like heart eyes emoji. No, actually spend the time when you have time. Now, sometimes it's spent when you're sitting on the couch at the end of a long day, uh, just you know mindlessly scrolling through, but just use that time to engage with people. Reach out, comment, spread positivity. There's so much negativity out there in the world and on social media that bringing a positive message or complimenting somebody is gonna feel good. They're gonna like it and they're gonna wanna know more about you or boom, they hit that follow button and start following you back. So a uh, big thing there, uh, indirect messages. Direct messages now more than ever could lead to sales. Just stay open to them. Uh, some of them, of course, are always gonna be spammy and those are pretty easy to spot uh, for anybody who uh, is, I don't even wanna say internet savvy, anybody who's texted with anybody or gotten robo texts or robo calls, you, you fish out the, the you know, you kind of, see the fishy ones right away and you're able to just to knock those out of the way and not waste your time responding to them. Legit 
customers who are asking for quotes or, hey, can you decorate on hoodies? Yes, absolutely. Which is another thing you want to show your services here, you know, um, and then monitor performance. There's a lot of great business tools in that meta business suite uh, in, on in terms of Facebook and Instagram as well, where you could use both of them uh, in there. So uh, and you could see how posts are doing and learn from it. So, oh, yeah, I posted just a product photo uh, and it didn't do so well as when I posted a reel of it or like. I didn't say, I didn't really describe this or like there wasn't a call to action. So you'll start to see patterns if you just, just pay attention to it. I don't even want to say like overanalyze. I know we're all busy apparel decorators. Uh, so some of us don't have the time to do it, but you want to optimize the time that you are doing it and optimizing your time on social media is going to be spent by looking at a little bit of data and just seeing what posts are, are working well. Now, when the post does work well, that's your recipe. So you could continue using that. Now, don't hammer every single post to be the exact same thing, uh, but use a similar format or the the style of comment that you mentioned, or uh, if it's like that close up, like decoration uh, kind of very detailed view, and that did well. Continue to do posts similar to that. Uh, that's your recipe for success, and it worked for you and your audience. So so keep doing it, uh, interspersed with some other content as you keep playing around with it. Um, so just keeping it going. Let's see. Uh, Steven says, even comment consistently on the clients you want posts. It can lead to contacting you. Perfect. That is exactly why I love these webinars. And that is a great comment, Steven. Thank you for sharing that. But that is it. If you want to go after a client, say that band that is that local band that's on the cusp of, of breaking big. I'm going to use bands, you know, here for a little while. Uh, a nice, a nice reference. I come from the music background, how I got in the printing industry. So it's natural for me. But that band uh, that you know is the local, like, continue to engage with them. Maybe even go to a show like like it's all this stuff that like weaves in with social media and it's really easy, especially if like you've uh, found a niche that you are already a part of. Like uh, I had a podcast just the other week with Trevor Murphy, uh, who is a stalls ambassador here with us, but uh, essentially just a, uh, a customer who is an avid fan of the brand and uh, with the Transfer Express products helped biz build his business. But he built his business around disc golf because he was a disc golfer himself. Frisbee golf, super fun stuff. If you haven't played, I would recommend going to play. Uh, but uh, check out that podcast. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts uh, or uh, even on like the Facebook pages as well, uh, where he talks about finding that niche. And he was so involved with it. He knew exactly what, what style of shirts to print. Uh, and he was already engaging with a lot of people on Facebook. So it ties in perfectly to how he marketed to that specific audience finding where they are and marketing to them on Facebook using social media. So uh, a lot of tips here, there's a lot to download, uh, but let's start looking into some post ideas and we'll actually start looking at some real Facebook posts here as well. So these are all ideas. Now, before I get into a lot of these ideas over here on this side uh, of me, I think it's over on this side, uh, I wanna mention the tip that's mentioned right here. And that is follow the 80-20 rule. So when you're you're kind of organizing your content and you're looking through a lot of the content of what you're going to post uh, and you're going to see, I stole this tip straight out of that guidebook in there, but 20% of your posts should be blatantly promotional. You should limit it at that because too much promotion, people are going to get, uh, it's like the, the spam emails you get, you know, when it's like you're talking, oh yeah, I know you have 20% off because you told me six times and you sent me 20 emails a day. Cool. So only 20% of your content, because otherwise it's going to start to look a little spammy. Now, it's great to advertise services uh, and be like, wow, look at this new style coming. That's not overtly promotional. The sales, the, hey, I could get you this price on 100 t-shirts. That stuff is blatantly promotional. So a lot of the stuff you could weave promotions into content, like we're going to see here in just a minute, uh, and you could actually build that up uh, to not make it look promotional. Content marketing in a nutshell is what we're doing here on social media and content marketing when done well should not feel like marketing at all. So uh, there is a fine balance and it takes some getting used to to see what relates to your audience, but you're going to figure that out. So uh, that 80% of other content should be tailored to the interest or something that they'll find useful uh, in your audience. So uh, whether it's, yeah, maybe some dog shirts or something like, hey, the weather's getting warmer now. We have spring styles of our, of our dog shirts. Yeah, it's a little promotional, but like for the people who are buying those dog shirts, like, yeah, I need I need a, a lighter weight one because the jacket now is too hot. My dog's sweating. Dogs don't sweat, right? They pant or something. I don't know. I have a dog. He all the time. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's get into these topics. So you can talk about trending topics. That is main events, uh, uh, current events, main events, current events and uh, topics coming up that are hot. 
uh, even seasonal stuff. That's, uh, you know, holidays and stuff coming up. Anybody have any plans for St. Patrick's Day coming up in a couple weeks? You know, uh, anybody going to an event? We do it all the time on our social media here. If you have a blog and you're writing a lot of content on how your customers could use your products or focusing on certain apparel styles or whatever it may be, it's great to share that content out there. Because especially with like spring styles and a lot of people outside, say you're a custom decorator outside of the printing industry, they don't know what style to use. So they're going to be like, I don't know, like uh, a Hanes or a Gildan or Fruit of the Loom, like these brands that they've heard of before, because they're like, I've never heard of Bella Canvas before. Is it good? Uh, it's expensive where you're able to educate people on some of those new trending styles. Uh, I was actually, you know, Sanmar just came and visited us and a lot of apparel decorators too. just reach out to the apparel suppliers and they'll give you demos. Uh, they could give you demos of products, tell you what's trending uh, and be able to tell you what's coming up. And then if you share that information with your customer, it's great content that you could share to your customers customers uh, that's going to be perfectly relevant to them, help advertise your services, position you as a pro, right? And possibly get more, uh, get more work from that too. Asking questions or polling your audience is always great. Hey, are you guys planning on, uh, you know, holding a party for St. Patrick's Day or what's, you know, kind of something like that? Uh, what, what, uh, what's the holiday that you're going to buy a t-shirt for this year? If you're running a brand and they're like, well, 4th of July, I buy a t-shirt every year to show up to this family party where everybody dresses to the nines or like, oh, I plan on, you know, going on spring break this year and I want to get the entire family shirt. So uh, asking questions like that is a great opportunity for it. Contests and giveaways are a great thing to do because everybody loves free stuff and it's a great way to spur engagement on your page. Hey, like and share this or tag a friend because then that helps grow your audience because then they're gonna be like, well, I want this t-shirt too. And they're gonna go in and follow you. But yeah, follow, like, share uh, for a chance to win a free t-shirt or like if you're a custom decorator, like we'll do a run of 12 shirts or something for you for free uh, and try to get as much followers. That's a great way to build follower bases and get great engagements on your posts as well. Of course, showing off your personality. Now, this is one of my favorite tips is just being authentic and being you. Because especially, say, on TikTok, there's so many stupid dances still, right? That if you just show your passion, your drive uh, into being an entrepreneur or owning a small business or printing apparel, anything of what you're passionate about and sharing that authentically with anybody out in the world is, in my eyes, better than 99.9% .9 of the stuff on TikTok. I would watch that all day and just see the hustle and the passion that people have about their craft or like, oh, this is so freeing that I get to be my own entrepreneur. Like stuff like that is just, it's authentic and it's you. And if you show your passion for decorating apparel and you're excited about it, that's going to give somebody so much more confidence to be like that brand I want to work with. They look like they're having fun. They love this. They care instead of some online retailer that they're going to go find and go, well, they might have a cheaper price, but I want to support this business. So a great way to be in there, show off your personality, show you. Uh, you could promote your discounts or sales, like I said, as that 20% uh, of the uh, of the actual sales uh, or the actual post of what you'll be doing. Show those discounts and sales. You could share reviews, testimonials, which is a great thing. We're going to get into to, uh, possibly you know offering cards or incentives to post on social media with testimonials. It's a great way to get that uh, kind of exponential marketing out there where your customers almost become marketing partners for you by praising your brand uh, and showing off, especially like say tag us on Instagram, they're going to have to post a photo of their project. So people are going to get to see the quality firsthand and it's going to be much, much more trustworthy coming from another source other than you. Because if you're like, well, my quality is the best. It's fantastic. Right. But then as soon as, uh, you know, somebody else comes in that is a customer and like, no, his quality is the best. It's, it's really good. I'm never going to shop anywhere else. Right there. That gives you the social proof and it gives you the confidence uh, to, to order from me then. Right. At least I would hope so. It was just two versions of me. So I understand I didn't do that <laughs> properly. Oh, I'm having fun today. Um, I hope you guys are too in here. Um, so of course, you could recognize and introduce any employees that you have too. A lot of times, uh, you know, if you're just a, a sole proprietor uh, running your business from home or just as a hobby, uh, working that uh, five to nine, the side hustle, let's say, um, that your uh, your employees might be your pets. And so like when the kid, when the kitty cat jumps up on the computer, like, well, 
little kitty's doing hard work today. <laughs> you know, take a photo of it. People love cat photos. If you know anything about the internet, internet 101 is that it's all just cat photos, you know. <laughs> going live is going to be a big thing that we're going to talk about here too. Uh, sharing memes I've already kind of touched on and we're going to touch on a little bit more. Um, but let's start, let's, let's jump right in. Look at some examples right here. Uh, so this one, right off the bat is showing orders that you've delivered to happy customers. So this is a great thing to show when we're looking at objectives. Look, there's 13. I think the, the photo is here. It's right here where it says like 13 on this uh, on this image upload, right? There's 13 more images. This is a great way to show off. Not only do I do screen printing on hoodies or t-shirts, uh, a lot of hoodies here for this one, but also embroidery. It shows off your services. That's the objective right there. I want to show off my capabilities as a, as a garment decorator that I could do X, Y, and Z. Boom, right here. Happy New Year. We would like to thank all of our customers throughout the year. Look forward to working with new and past customers and returning customers, right? So like all of the stuff, just as they have it on press, showcasing the awesome designs that they've put together and uh, all of these different styles, all of the capabilities, right? Now it's really easy to stitch this together with some of that reshared content from other customers, right? Uh, you should ask permission if you're going to use theirs or include that postcard or box stuff for saying, hey, uh, share your products on social media. If we feature them on social media, we'll give you a 10% discount on your next order or something like that, right? and then provide the correct uh, hashtags or handles to, to tag in there so that you could stay notified and be like, wow, yeah, that dude loves. Uh, it, it, the best thing too is like, yes, these are awesome. Like on press or like somebody opens the box and it's like, wow, these turned out better than I could have imagined. But you know what really looks the best is when the entire team here is wearing this hoodie and you have them all lined up on the baseball field or on the basketball court and everybody's wearing them and they're all smiling. The kids feel like they're in the pros because they have uh, some custom hoodies and workout gear. Like that is awesome to show. Now that's the kind of content that's like, yes, you did that. Your business did that. Man, I need something similar, but it's not a basketball team. It's the, it's the landscaping crew that I have. Like, Yes, I could do that. Absolutely. So show that stuff in there. Um, yeah, Stephen. Stephen, you're full of awesome tips today, man. You want to jump on the webinar with me, with me here? Ask your clients to tag you when they post wearing your product. Absolutely. But you have to ask. You have to ask for that. So having a little postcard box stuffer uh, just dropped in the box, or maybe that's part of the confirmation email when you're like, hey, your order shipped. Be sure to share it and so you don't even have to put something physical in the box. Ask them. Because if you don't mention it, they're probably not going to do it. And even if you do mention it, they may not be doing it, but you have a way more likely chance of them sharing it if you ask them to or tied an incentive to it as well. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. Man, Steven, you're on fire today. Really love it. Um, I see some some talks about uh, some uh, internet uh, actual like e-commerce stores in here. Um, which is great because that's one of the con that's one of the, the pieces of uh, social media that I didn't actually like put into this presentation. But any social media now, granted, it is a huge swatch of people and a lot of active users, but it's all built on borrowed land. If you build your entire business on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, and like with TikTok, the there's always these talks of the U.S. government shutting it down because it's Chinese owned or whatever it is. Um, that like that's gone. Your entire following is gone. So uh, investing in your own little side, uh, you know, your own business or your own website is a great way to host uh, a lot of that. Get, maintain an email list of your followers so that if anything does happen to those social media platforms, uh, you do still have some kind of contact list with people who were in your brand. Uh, and that could be part of content here anyway. So uh, let's, let's move on and look at more posts here. So here's a more promotional post. But look at this, using some mock-up seasonal sales. Hey, doing a pre-order for St. Patrick's Day designs, $18 plus shipping, $2 for 2X shirts, $15 for youth, infant, toddler sizes. Wow, look at these cool designs here for the shenanigans. That looks like it would be perfect for my daughter. I'm not going to wear it, but I want to buy a shirt for my daughter with that. She likes rainbows. She is way into shenanigans, uh, and she needs something for St. Patrick's Day. Look at that. Add $2 or $15 for youth sizes right there. I know that they're doing it. So they're putting all this stuff in here. The price is clearly listed. They're showing the options in colorways, and they're even mentioning how to order right in there. Um, I see you guys in there on the chat, sharing your Instagrams and, and starting to follow each other, building your own uh, engagement and community. And that's fantastic, guys. Absolutely love to see it. Another thing here that is probably in the show more section, or maybe over this way, uh, that's in that show more section is how to order. 
is that's what you want to be putting in these posts. So it's like, yeah, I want that here for the shenanigans shirt. But if there's no like link directly, like order here or put your pre-order in now or browse all styles or whatever that link would be that I could click on, uh, then I'm going to go to the profile and be like, hey, okay, cool. Let me take a look at this. If there's no link in the bio to go to their website and easily pre-order these, I may not be DMing or leaving a comment. So if it's like, hey, leave a comment and I'll DM you, leave a comment if you want one of these, how easy is that? I'll just leave a comment and then it's up to the business owner to then uh, follow up and be like, hey, yeah, what style were you looking for? Yeah, I could deliver it on this date uh, that, you know, and talk about specifics kind of either in the comments here for everybody to see uh, or even find it back in uh, in some, you know, uh, in a, a direct message or however you want to do it. But it's going to be best to put them right to put as many as least amount of barriers, remove all of the barriers from somebody to see something want to make that purchase and give you money. So if you could link this directly to the website page for these shirts, you could click, drag down your style. Even if it says it's an Etsy page, you could click, drag down that style and boom, you're all set, ready to go. Here's another one. It's cute. It's showing these toddler shirts. When one of your tiniest customers stops by, you must take pictures. Go team mini mule. So at, at an event here, Dallas Market Center, Aquine and Design, and uh, a great example of like, look at the shirt, cute kid. And you're like, oh, look how adorable that is. I know right now that they do youth apparel and uh, they do equestrian themed apparel. Boom. If I wasn't even familiar with the brand, right there. But that's a great touch point uh, and kind of the feel good story uh, when you need to see that on social media in there. Savannah asks, what's the best site to use and set up an online store? That's a loaded question and a question for another webinar. Uh, but Squarespace, Wix, Big Cartel, Shopify, WooCommerce are all a great starting point for you to look at, but I'm not gonna go any more in depth on that. <laughs> uh, but here too, thank you, Robin and HR Personal Expressions for the perfect little onesie to celebrate our little one. It's a great testimonial in a brand new little baby. Adore me, but please don't kiss me. So super cute on there. It's telling the story uh, regardless of what it is. If it's quick turn or customization, uh, but this is obviously relating to a lot of the audience, whether it be equestrian or if they're making uh, children's newborn apparel, stuff like that. You're showing it in use right there. Um, yes, uh, Julie, 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 thank you for answering that one. Shopify on there for the win too, right? Um, let's see. So social post ideas here. So timing is everything. This post right here uh, that we're showing here for you is, uh, you know, very, very timely and relevant as we're talking about the big game just ended, what, two weeks ago, a week ago. Uh, this went up literally the second the game ended. And that's about when we took the screenshot here of this because we loved it so, so much. Casey Swagger, absolutely awesome out in Kansas City. Uh, I saw somebody saying there in Kansas City, if you want any Kansas City gear, Casey Swagger is the place to do it. Uh, tons of spirit wear. And I love too, one, one side note about this post right here. She's absolutely fantastic about avoiding any legal trouble or licensing. Here, obviously, you could see this is a Chief shirt, right? Champions, Kansas City. You know they've won two Super Bowls here recently. Uh, and right there, it says it on there, but does not say anything that could get them in trouble with the NFL or the Kansas City Chiefs organization in general. They got the team colors, but it's nothing that says anything more. So she does absolutely fantastic. But you could use the same idea following in your local community. We're talking high school championships or like the first day of school. As that school year starts approaching, like, I could ship these to you fast, like, and, and tie into those services that you know your customers are going to look for, uh, travel team tournaments or uh, cheerleading competitions, any of those large events that you know uh, that have a set date, be timely and say, hey, you're going to it, uh, especially if you're in a local area and say there's like a big uh, concert or music festival or something going on or any community event that you could tie on your services to uh, and absolutely do it. So either it's pre-event or immediately following the event right here uh, or any current events. One thing that I saw, we were we were all watching the video, uh, is that Meteor Over Texas, right? A Meteor uh, Over Texas just in the past week or so uh, didn't hurt anybody, uh, but uh, immediately a t-shirt shop outside of Dallas goes, uh, we're going to start making t-shirts and where do they go to social media to start advertising them like i survived the the texas meteor of 23 uh 
And right there, right there, they post it immediately after the news breaks of people going, what was that in the sky? I heard an explosion and they put the t-shirt, they whip up the t-shirt design real quick and have it ready to go. I know a lot of local businesses here in the Cleveland area tie things to the sports teams uh, and have designs ready to go at the end of the game. I know the one year the Cleveland Browns made the playoffs and every single t-shirt shop here in the city, uh, or at least like the ones that sell a lot were this is our year, you know, like where it's next year, next year, next year, next year. Cause that's what we always say with the Cleveland Browns. Oh, there's always next year. So it had all of it crossed out and said, no, this is our year. Of course we were promptly eliminated from the playoffs <laughs> as the Browns do it. But um, those, you could see exactly how they used uh, concepts just like this. Now with this one, an overly just kind of general promotional post for the business, but here, if they are attracting more of that streetwear uh, kind of look, Perfect. Absolutely perfect for uh, what they're doing with like the graffiti. They have their logo on the logo shirt, clean, classic black shirt. And this is probably their target audience of exactly what they're looking for. The best prices in town don't settle for generic designs everyone else has. What makes us different is that we turn your t-shirt or hoodie into ideas into reality. There are no minimums and fast turnaround times, no jobs too big or too small. A great way to showcase your services right here. Custom World is talking about. They do custom work. We'll design it for you. No stock designs here. No minimums, any size, uh, you know, no order minimums and fast turnaround time. And they also told not just the hoodie that's or the T-shirt that's shown there, but they could print on hoodies, too. Um, so that's that's all awesome in there. Um, Bengals paid my bills last year in January, February. Yes. Sarah, that's what I'm talking about. And the Bengals fans, who day, right? Uh, I vote for the, I always read for the Bengals as just the Ohio team here when uh, when the Browns don't make it. And Joe Burrow is a, he's a, he's a stand-up guy, right? We like Joe Burrow here. Um, <laughs> Crystal, that's a great idea. Yeah, use Google Forms to do orders for teams and schools. And if you're not doing spirit sale or something there, you can even link to the, like, the, the Google Form to say, put your information in there. And here's an email, and I'm going to contact you back. So a great way to be able to do that uh, and kind of keep it organized, both easy for the customer. And then Google Forms throws it right into a spreadsheet for you for nice, easy organization. It's a great tip. Man, you, you guys are awesome on fire today. Absolutely love it. Um, now, next is going live. I mentioned it a little bit earlier when we were talking about social media tips. Go live. Don't be afraid to show off your personality. Don't be afraid to be authentic because that is, uh, it's just huge. It always, any one of your followers, like you might post as a business page, nobody's going to see your post, right? doesn't really pop up in people's notification feeds. Maybe it might show up on a few timelines, but it's like a 10% or 20% of your followers at best are going to see your post, okay? When you go live, anybody who is on the platform right there, it pops up on top. So-and-so that you follow is going live right now. So it is just way easier to get in front of people. Find out, uh, you know, kind of the, the best times. And it might take some playing around and going live at like noon or three o'clock in the afternoon or that happy hour hour or maybe seven or eight at night, depending on your audience. Maybe you're, you know, if you're if you're really into uh, like gamers or Twitch streamers or anything like that, then maybe you're going live a little bit later when everybody's already on. Maybe try going live on Twitch or building an audience there, engaging with people there or wherever the social media platforms are, uh, and then just find what time you get the most followers. I know every single time, regardless of what we're doing, if I go live on TikTok, there are 200 to 400 people immediately with eyes on the video. Now, granted, all of them don't stick around and it evens out uh, to depending on the time of day, how many people are on it. But if you're doing engaging content, being authentic, people are probably going to stick around. And, and maybe be exposed to your brand for the first time with the For You page, or your followers are going to be able to ask you questions very similar to what we're doing right now, you know, uh, where you're able to ask questions, you're able to interact with people, and it's just awesome. It's a short form video content that uh, is, is way more than the five or 10 minutes you invest into going live. Plan it a little bit. Maybe on TikTok, you'll see people all the time as small businesses like pack orders with me. And they just ask questions and people will tune in to try to see their order get packed or they'll place an order while it's live or, or they'll run a sale while they're live. Hey, well, I'm live right now. It's 20% off anything in the store. Here's the promo code. Go use it. So only I'm going to turn it off as soon as I stop my live. So buy stuff now. So if you want to use it as promotional, just like that, that's the way to do it. And Julie says, I go live on TikTok in the evening. Usually have around 100 people watching, get about 30 to 40 new followers. 
absolutely awesome tip. Thank you for sharing that, Julie. That is absolutely right. Like you'll always see more followers, especially on those like video platforms. Uh, and then that's people who are identifying with you that liked what you did. So now you're just pulling it, you're growing your audience of people who already like your content. So it's perfect. Uh, if you don't want to be on camera here, just like uh, Grace Grace Printhouse here, uh, you could still just show your stuff. Set up the camera just, just like here as you're packing orders on the desk, showing off your services. Maybe you're just printing shirts and the camera's on your heat press and you're just talking along uh, and reading comments as you go. You don't have to be on camera if you're camera shy. Maybe your hands still have to be on camera, right? Uh, but you're able to still do the very, very similar thing. So with this specific example with Grace Printhouse, 800 views in about five minutes of a live video, right? Pretty cool, just saying, hey, look at what I have new for this year. Going through everything, tons of engagement, tons of likes, tons of comments, all in real time. Uh, and she was able to get that immediate feedback. I guarantee she sold some stuff here from this. Um, so yeah, really, really awesome. And going live, yes, gotta go live. Reels and short form video, like I mentioned too, are taken over everything. You see reels popping up on Facebook. Reels are on uh, on Instagram as well. It is solely what is on TikTok. If you go over to Pinterest, a lot of it is short form video too. If you go over to uh, even YouTube now has YouTube shorts, which is the short form video. So short form video is spreading everywhere. So depending on where you set up your base camp, right? Whether it be any of those platforms that I just mentioned, even Etsy, Etsy on the mobile app. If you are using the mobile app on Etsy, it has turned into <laughs> pretty much TikTok where it's just short form video of people showing off products. And that stuff is eye catching. I got to tell you. So as long as you're showing it, if you're just wearing the shirt and you're turning, like I'm wearing a district DT 104 right now, but you can see like, look, Hey, look, this is how this fits. Look, it's nice and tight. It's not worn out. Look, I don't have that weird uh, puff on like an over, oversized shirt. So this is the shirt style that I'm wearing right now. Right, boom, right there. That's all you have to do and show off your product. Put your own product on. Or if you're like, hey, I just got these new samples in of these hoodies. Look how great they feel. What do you guys think? Like showing off all stuff like that is gonna help you show off your brand, show off your services, show off your capabilities. Uh, and people are going to see that without them just, they think that they're just getting a, a nice heads up on a brand new hoodie style. Like, wow, that one looks nice. Ooh, there's a cowl neck on that. Oh, those drawstrings look fantastic. Ooh, it has a jersey lined hood. Obviously you can tell I'm in the apparel business <laughs> and I'm nerding out about this. Not everybody nerds out about it like that, but you could see that you could get that on there and just, it takes a couple seconds to make these videos. There's in app editors for almost every one of the platforms uh, and just playing around with it for a little bit. You get the hang of it, clipping down clips or adding music or little uh, emojis or text overlays. Got to do it. Uh, so they, of course, could be shared across all of those platforms. So if you are set up on Facebook and you're making Facebook Reels, you could download that and then just repost it to your TikTok or Instagram, right? So you could repurpose this this all over the internet. Um, it provides all of that nice brand awareness and gets more eyes on your stuff because some people just go, especially on TikTok, just through the For You page. If it gets served to them, you could get a new follower right on that. Maybe uh, you're not, that's not necessarily happening on like a platform, say like Facebook, where it is mostly like the stuff you follow or paid ads, but you could boost these all the same to try to get in front of your prospective audience. Um, I see YouTube getting talked about here a little bit, uh, which is uh, obviously still a social network, uh, but a little bit different than like the, the, the viewability. Now, if you want to be teaching people or, I mean, no, I don't want to get you wrong. If you're going for like gamers and stuff, there's a lot of game streaming uh, ever since even YouTube kind of leaned into that to combat with uh, the Twitch streaming. So there's all that stuff on YouTube as well. And they even have posts. So you could like make customizable posts. But if you're like, I've browsed on YouTube for years and I've never seen a post. That's why not, not a lot of people see them and you have to start really browsing through it uh, instead of searching for things on there. But it's a great way because uh, YouTube is like the second or third largest search engine uh, aside from Google. Which fun story. Google owns YouTube. <laughs> um, so you tell your story behind the scenes. Be authentic. Be you. Show the packing of orders. Anything you want to do on our TikTok, we get a lot of success just showing printing shirts. It's really fun uh, and showing how accessible it could be to other people. So another uh, great uh, post idea here is collaborating and cross promoting with other businesses, right? <clears throat> Mary, when we talk about IG, that's Instagram. 
Uh, I saw that question in the chat. Sarah, Sarah already on it too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so this is a great post here for collaborating and cross-promoting businesses. Both you and your customer wins. So this one here is Porter Craft Corner uh, shouting out positively pet grooming, uh, which this is kind of like a double-edged sword because it helps elevate your customers, number one. So uh, maybe uh, somebody who already uses this service or is looking for a pet groomer, you're advertising them to your business and say, you know, as a custom decorator with a couple of years under your belt, you might have more followers than a pet grooming service uh, that maybe just started out and is getting some hoodies to, you know, show like just be employee workwear. But you're showing it off as like, hey, this is a cool customer spotlight. I like this company. And they're most likely going to share this then too, right? To get more exposure to it. So the more people that show your stuff, uh, the more it's going to attract people to your following. So it's that double-edged sword. Now, also, this is great for other businesses looking at you to go, wow, we just bought some hoodies and they gave us some free promotion and they talked about our services and how awesome we are. Like, look in that, in that thing. It says like, yeah, they provide haircuts, bathing, nail trims, nail filing, teeth brushing, and, and de-shedding treatments. Like, whoa. This is an apparel garment decorator that's shouting out the services for another business. So how cool is that? Wait, like we just buy some hoodies and we get some free promo and like some free ad space almost too. This is great. I'm going to go with this company because if I buy from Custom Inc. or uh, whatever national online retailer, guess what? They're not going to do that for me. Maybe at best they'll put a story up of like my glowing review, but like even nobody cares about that. They're not going to, they're not like especially to them, like customing, they're not going to care about that. This is how you attract especially more local business. Wow, that's great. They're giving back to the community and they're showing off their services. Look, we printed these hoodies for them and they look fantastic too. So a nice double-edged sword right here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so another thing here, our fundraisers. Now this works a lot on Facebook posts, uh, a little bit harder because you could put links directly in the Facebook posts here. Uh, but on Instagram, you have to put the link in bio. So you have to say, Look for the link in bio. You can't link directly in the post. Uh, the same with TikTok as well. So like, unless you're, you're your business page and you're adding that product up underneath of it, but like this one here, linking to the spirit sale as a fundraiser. Again, it shows you care about your local community and it shows that you're giving back in some way. So all of that philanthropy uh, is really great for any business and it's great for your visibility in your local community. Uh, it also highlights good causes. It could show you like, uh, especially if it's like, you know, somebody in your family, like for this, uh, I think this is uh, diagnosed with cancer for the second time. So like super heartbreaking for this family. We need to provide all the help that we could get. His wife has to take off work. Uh, we need to step up as a community and help. And like being a t-shirts are a great fundraiser. We all know. Um, and if you don't know, we just put out a great ebook uh, with about fundraising with t-shirts as well. You could grab that on the ebook section. I'm going to challenge Mike to see if he could put that link to that uh, fundraising ebook right there. Uh, but here, it just it it's commonly shared too, so it's going to expose your brand to a much wider audience uh, in the community. If this is like a local uh, a local thing, a uh, local business that's that's targeting custom decorating for uh, the local community and just able to get your business out there. So great, great stuff to put on there as well. Um, now, of course, engage. This is the polls. This is the questions. We do this for almost every show that we go to uh, as Transfer Express, is we'll make a design for shirts that then when you come to the Transfer Express booth at the Decorated Apparel Expo this weekend in Kansas, right, Sarah? Right? <laughs> uh, or um, uh, the, the Atlantic City Impressions Expo, this is actually the one I think for our uh, our Kansas City show. So it is perfect that I mentioned that. But we say one, two, three, or four, which one's your favorite? We're going to print it and we'll bring it to the show. Uh, and they always get great engagement. People love sharing like, oh, I love number one, but I like the colors in number four, uh, which, yes, it's just red. It's not yellow. So like, yeah, you could put all that stuff in there or like, They'll be like, why is there a birdie, a badminton birdie with that Kansas City? That's so weird. And there's a huge like uh, sculpture of a badminton birdie in Kansas City. And then they're like, oh, that's something new. I didn't learn that today. I like that design. That's fun. Uh, or, I mean, the Kansas City, in my opinion, if I was going to vote on this, I'd say number four all day. Like, right? That's fantastic. I love it with the crown. Looks really cool. Um, love the colors tied up to the city. Um, so help us choose. We do it and people will uh, do it. It's great to do uh, uh, which designs you like best or true or false, anything like that. 
Um, let's see. When you post on Facebook, this is Monica's question. You post on Facebook. Does your post get seen by everyone if your profile is public uh, or do the people you follow only see your post? I'm not familiar with Facebook. Uh, so that depends on the privacy settings that you have set up. It could be either your friends or it could be public. If it's a business page, you want it to be public. Uh, but even then, anybody could go see your post. Facebook is not going to put it in the feed of every single one of your followers. They're going to encourage you to boost your post uh, to do that. Now, if it is like high engagement and people are smashing the like button or heart buttons and they're commenting on it and you're commenting back, it's going to show in more of your followers feeds. So you get what I'm saying? That's that engagement, why we wanna get that engagement. Uh, if people share it in direct messages or like share it to their page, it's obviously going to get a little bit more legs than if it just sat there, one person liked it and then Facebook stops showing it to people. The average lifespan of a Facebook post is quite short. Uh, with your audience, you might have a day or two to get in their Facebook feed, depending on how much they're scrolling on Facebook. And then other than that, it's gone. And it's never going to show up in someone's Facebook feed. Now, if they go to your profile and they go scrolling through your profile, you could see that. Uh, but it all depends on your actual settings. Because you could set, uh, as like a personal profile, you could set your post to be just friends only. You could even set your posts or photos to just be you if you just want it as like your own kind of like little scrapbook or your own uh, photo album uh, that you don't want anybody else to see. But you want to be able to scroll back in that Facebook format and look back a couple years later and be like, oh, I remember that party. That was fun. Like, yeah, you could do that or you could have it shared to everybody. So uh, public and friends, just check the privacy settings uh, in your Facebook profile. But I would definitely recommend setting up a business account separate from your personal profile, because if there's any, you know, crazy stuff you did a couple years ago uh, and it's you with a trash can on your head uh, and you're trying to sell T-shirts and somebody goes scrolling through your photos and it's uh, you goofing around with your friends. Not exactly the best stuff that you want people to see uh, representing your business. So don't go to my Facebook profile. Don't go looking for photos of me with my head in a trash can. I'm kidding. They're not on there. I've cleaned those off long ago. <laughs> so look at a little uh, a little difference here between Instagram and Facebook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Instagram is that photo sharing application where Facebook is a little bit more. There's different types of information and media on there. You have long, long form video. You have short form video. You have stories. You have text. You have news articles. You're able to link in the post. All that other stuff in there. Uh, pretty much photos and short videos only on Instagram uh, and everything else on Facebook. Uh, Instagram does have a slightly smaller audience and it skews a little bit younger uh, than traditionally where Facebook does. And Facebook has pretty much everybody on it, right? Um, and uh, Instagram, definitely more of that younger demographic. Now, both uh, are used primarily in mobile apps on your phone, right? So all of them used on your mobile apps on your phone. Uh, and uh, although Facebook does have a much better desktop client uh, for computers, and I think still like it's like 20% of Facebook use is still on desktop computers, where like Instagram is like two or like 1%. Nobody uses it on uh, actual desktop computers in there. So Talking about Instagram posts, hashtags are a big thing to help you get discovered both on TikTok and Instagram. They don't necessarily work all the best because people don't discover things on Facebook like they do on Instagram. And that uh, discover feature with the the uh, at the bottom, you have that magnifying glass to be able to search. Um, or did they move it to the top now? But anyway, you have the ability to search and kind of look out specific interests and hashtags where a lot of the stuff is found. Hashtag it with business related things or branded uh, if you're going to brand it with your own name. Uh, and uh, definitely if you're reaching a market of like dog shirts or uh, concert tees or whatever it may be, make sure you're hashtagging that too. Because uh, just think of the search terms that people are going to search for and use those uh, to put in there. So now let's talk about how often you should be posting, right? We saw some great examples of some Facebook and Instagram posts uh, that you could use yourself. Uh, but keep in mind that same theme that we talked about, quality over quantity, right? You want to be pushing out quality content and not just posting just to post because it's going to turn your audience off and they're not going to follow you or they're going to snooze you or hide you and not see your posts for 30 days or possibly forever until the end of time. Uh, and then you're not staying top of mind and your social media is not working like it should. So make sure it's nice, relevant content. Also, here's the, the, you know, the numbers at the bottom, but keep in mind using the resources that you have. Somebody mentioned right at the top in the chat section, like, oh, I, I use social media. Yeah, when I have time. 
yes, obviously running the business, printing t-shirts is going to be number one or getting those products listed or dealing with customer emails or whatever it may be. Shipping orders out is going to take precedence and be your number one priority. But of course, when you can use social media, use it. So ideally, Facebook, three to four times a week. You could get away with posting a little bit more because the lifespan is a little bit shorter on those posts. If nobody's engaging on it, Facebook isn't serving it to anybody. Nobody's going to be able to see it. Uh, minimum, at least post once a week. If you are really stretched for time, post once a week. And the great thing to do is like be able to schedule and create content all in batches. So with Facebook, uh, the Meta Business Suite, you could actually upload a whole bunch of photos and, and kind of take four hours on Friday. And I'm going to build the next two or three weeks of social media content that essentially is just going to post automatically. And then when I go on on my break or like, you know, uh, sitting on sitting on the couch at home that I could scroll through and engage with posts as it goes. Uh, for business, I always recommend turning on notifications if you have like a business phone. Uh, and you, so like if somebody DMs you with a quick question, you could convert them or answer them if you can right then. Or if you're printing, then you pick up your phone and you're like, oh, hey, look, there's a ton of notifications on my phone right now that, oh, cool. Great. I'm able to, uh, to, to, to address them right now. Now that I have time or like, Oh, that client that I was, that was on the fence about buying just got back to me on, on Instagram. Like, Oh, I got to get them, you know? So being able to, to stay aware and at least when you have time, manage your resources accordingly. Um, of course, consistency is key. So try to stay on a schedule if you're going to develop a schedule for yourself. Uh, and of course the, the, the platform kind of dictates what the frequency should be. So with Facebook, once a week is probably going to be okay. If you do, you know, it, you should obviously be doing more, but at least try to get once a week on Facebook with Instagram because it is a visual format and t-shirts inherently are, uh, are visual that uh, we definitely want to be sure that we're posting a little bit more there. You could get away with your snapshots of what you're doing, what's on press, what you're working on, some sweet blanks that you absolutely fell in love with. Uh, oh my God, this, this Bella canvas 3930 or 3739 is just so soft, you guys have to feel this thing. I'm in love with it. Obsessed. Hashtag obsessed, right? Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting into the social media speak, aren't we? Uh, and so it's a lot easier to put that on Instagram and a lot easier to stay top of mind. Now, those kind of are a much different feed and feel uh, where it even kind of like your business name is even more hidden. It's content focused, big square in your face or like even full screen video uh, that's going to catch people's eye more than uh, anything else. Same with TikTok. Uh, TikTok, you should probably be posting a minimum of like two or three times a week. But with the video content, sometimes it just doesn't fit into our schedules, right? Uh, it takes a little bit more than just snapping a photo and thinking of a clever, quick caption that you could put in there uh, for TikTok. So you definitely want to be sure that, that you're running with that. Um, and so should you use TikTok, right? The videos are short and relatable, super easy. It, it's, not, it's easy to link in your profile to other platforms or your website to buy. Um, obviously, the fastest growing social platform has taken the internet by storm over the past couple of years through the pandemic uh, to even on some days like surpass Google with active users on the platform. So uh, there's tons of trends and it's really easy to just latch on to the trending sounds and music tracks that Facebook will, or like not Facebook, that TikTok will actually tell you in the app, this is the number one song used today. Use that song because you're going to get shown up in other people's feeds and you're going to get more eyes on your products and services. This is where we've seen uh, quite a few uh Quite a few at-home apparel decorators, dorm room decorators, small businesses, dog brands, just ab you go viral with one post and your life changes overnight. Not probably, you know, that's not, it's not like hitting the lottery. You have way better odds of, of getting viral, going viral on TikTok than you do hitting the lottery. Uh, but still, you want to make sure that you have the products in, you have the online store that could support that, uh, that, that backs that up. Uh, but it's definitely not as volatile as it once was. I would even say a year or two ago, like, you saw a whole bunch of people going to like 300,000 to 500,000 views overnight with like a thousand followers or 800 followers. And it's like out of nowhere, they're up to 40,000 followers and they're showing their uh, Etsy store, uh, you know, notifications of people buying stuff, just going off the hook and they're going through scrolls and scrolls and they're like, ah, this is a good problem to have, but I'm kind of freaking out. Cause how am I going to ship all this stuff? Like, and they have to close their Etsy stores for a couple of weeks to, to, backfill all of these orders that go in there but that does happen right you have a zero chance of of that if you're not posting on tiktok what's that wayne gretzky quote uh you miss 100 of the shots you don't take 
So take your shots, be authentic, show off your products on TikTok. I say you should absolutely do it. It may not be your home base because you're not going to be perfectly relatable with your audience. It's not going to be your exact audience, but you're going to get a nice wide scope and view. Give it a shot, right? Just be careful that if you're sitting there at night, nine o'clock at night, and you're scrolling through TikTok, and then you look up at the clock and it's two o'clock in the morning, you can't get that time back, okay? You can't get that time back. So be careful of the scroll if you are just getting on TikTok, okay? I'm looking at you. <laughs> but you can see here, 52% of users say that they find new products and they purchase them on TikTok. Hashtag TikTok made me buy it, right? So another thing I want to talk about here is creating mock-ups. You don't necessarily need to be printing apparel if you're just starting out. You could be creating mock-ups, just like that St. Patrick's Day design that we saw in that social media post. Create mock-ups that look good. These lifestyle elements are awesome to have in there and gives a little bit more concrete uh, concrete kind of context to the images of what you're doing. Now, our Easy View Online Designer, the free, customizable, super powerful online design tool at transferexpress.com gives you the power to do this for free, no Canva subscription, no nothing else like that. Uh, you could essentially be creating these mock-ups uh, with the artwork before you're ordering transfers all real time in Easy View. And I'm gonna jump into Easy View just to show you how to do that real quick here uh, in just a couple minutes. Uh, you could upload the photo with the Etsy look or you could pull in the flat uh, apparel that's already in that catalog or even model shots. So it pulls in our whole entire apparel, uh, blank apparel wholesale catalog. So you could search any of the styles. If you want a Next Level 3600, mock it up on a real Next Level 3600 without having to purchase the garment. Uh, maybe you're doing a pre-sale like that and you don't want to make any financial investment into making samples. You want your customers to front the bill, which is perfectly fine and a great strategy, but mock-ups are going to help you sell it. And the more uh, kind of context you could give to it, the more you could uh, make your customer feel like they relate to it, uh, is great. And I'll show you a few things here that we that we could show in there. So uh, the model shots are great too to show the fit and finish of the real garment. Like when I'm talking next level 3600, right? They want to know is that a fitted tee? Well, you're going to see on the model shot that it is a slightly form fitting tee. If it's that Port and Company PC 55 or that all, all style or whatever at American Apparel now, it's 1701, 1301, whatever it may be, that little bit more boxy streetwear style. Like yeah. You're going to see the fit and finish on those model shots. But I love these flat lays. Uh, and I'm going to jump over into Easy View Online Designer just to show you how easy it is uh, to be able to do it. So here we are in the Easy View Online Designer. I am going to go to my other monitor here so you can see what I'm doing. But essentially, we could go in here and add any layout, any clip art, anything we want to do. So I'm just going to open uh, some files here in our Easy View Online Designer. Just some stuff we've saved. Look, some stuff for Atlantic City that's coming out. Um, and let's just click on, I'm going to do one here for one of these videos. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Um, let's just go previously added cart. All the stuff that we've added to cart here. Let me pull in this nice little Lake Life, uh, graphic here. Now say this is, you know, you added your, your artwork from one of these, these layouts or anything here, uh, say like this champion one or this Lake Life, whatever we want it to be. We could go over into our mock-up section here. Now, all of that apparel that I was talking about, right? So let's say that 3,600, I'll just search 3,600 and pull in the next level 3,600. Now this is going to pull in this on a model shot, or we could go just a flat lay on the front shot, or if we want to do the back, uh, we could pull the back. There you go, the back shot, the back of the model. So if you want to showcase the front, the back, wherever this design is going to go, and boom, we'll have it. Let's say this is going on like a navy shirt. Actually, let's say like a, a light blue. So I don't know which one this is. Uh, if you hover over, it says turquoise. So boom, right there, we could see it. Uh, we'll click on our back model to get us back to the back side here. And of course, this is much faster when you're not currently streaming uh, a live webinar too. So uh, Easy View Online Designer does not require a super powerful computer. Uh, however, it does um, it does it does require an internet connection. All right. So <laughs> next level thirty six hundred. We'll go here. Let's turn this watermark off. So if you are proofing this with a customer, but if you're going to use it for social media, you don't want a watermark on it. So we could turn our watermark off. We'll just grab our selection here instead of our full gang sheet design selection only. And here we go. We get sizes as to how we think it's going to be. I always like to go off the collar, that the collar of a t-shirt is about seven to eight inches from like uh, the bottom seam, like the seam where it meets the garment to the seam where it meets the garment. So I'd say this print's probably about 11 inches wide right there on a, a probably medium or large size model. And just like that, boom, now we could download this and host it up on our site, right? 
uh, or our, our social media as we're talking about here today. So a product photo, or you want to say, hey guys, I have this Seneca Lake design coming out. Uh, I'm doing pre-orders right now. Awesome, right? Now, this is really cool, right? Is that you could actually upload your own. One of the great things here is this entire mock-up pack here, I have a special offer for you guys at the end of the webinar where you could get every single one of these mock-ups that I'm going to show you here. So let's just grab this one. You can see there's some with like a football or like a school notebook. Here's like a nice just sunglasses or like a vacation style. So like all of these that you see here, ski, some, some cheer stuff, uh, some tie-dye really great for this. You could take a photo with your phone even uh, of apparel laying down or you put it on your sister or your friend, your coworker, take a photo of them. You could upload that here into this designer. But I love these stylized kind of contextual lifestyle shots here. Um, this one's going to be great because this one kind of looks vacation-y. Or here we go. Vacation blue shirt. Perfect, right? So we're going to open this one up. And uh, trust me, you see this little blue bar chugging along. It's much faster to upload your own stuff when you're not at the same time uploading, um, uh, pulling in here. So yeah, it's, it's uploading up. It's uploading right now, blue bar at the top. So it pulls in. It's much faster for you at home uh, when you're not live streaming. So I'm just going to grab this one here again. Uh, and whoop, I'm going to click on selection only. And here we go. There's Lake Life right there on the back of a baby blue t-shirt. Wow. Is that going to help you sell more apparel? That should help you sell more apparel. Yeah, Lake Life should still be showing here. I hope it didn't freeze on us. Um, and so here, ready to go. We could download this right here. Bam. You guys can't see. Can you guys see what I'm seeing? Some people are saying uh, that they can see, and some people are saying that they can't see, because I could try to start the screen share again. Um, Crystal says, that's amazing. Where'd you get the backdrop? Uh, so yeah, okay, so you guys are seeing. So this upload my own, right? I do have a uh, um, a cool offer at the end where I have this entire mock-up pack that we'll send you guys uh, here uh, as a little, a little bonus here at the end of the webinar. So stick around for just a couple more minutes, but I'll show you this. Any of these that you wanna pull in um, are, yeah, free to use then for your store. Now you could go over to Etsy and buy these. There's a whole bunch of people who sell like apparel mock-ups and you could upload this in here. All of these download at 1400 by 1400 pixels, which are perfectly optimized for Instagram or Facebook uh, and even great for your Etsy listings or Shopify. You're not gonna get to be able to get the zoom super high res like you can on some of those Shopify previews, um, but in there. Uh, yes, the, I, keep, I keep closing this window. Uh, for all of these mock-ups here. This is just my my browser on my social media pack uh, to show you all of these different mock-ups uh, in here. But we'll we'll talk about those in just a minute. I want to keep going because we're getting really short on time and I still want to talk about social media. So let me get back over to the slides. We'll wrap this thing up and I'll talk about how you could get these uh, get these really cool uh, mock-ups yourself. So mocking up are, is a great thing. Now ads, I do want to touch on ads here just a, a, a little touch. Understanding your audience and your budget is going to be key. Now, advertising on social media, especially just to your followers to make sure everybody who follows you sees it, uh, is uh, relatively low. You are paying per impression, though. So as opposed to paying for like Google ads uh, that you do, uh, you get paid per click with those. These are any time that Facebook shows your ad, you get paid, you get charged for it. Uh, so that varies based on your audience, but especially say you're targeting to like a very specific geographic area for like a high school uh, t-shirt, boom, right there. Like, uh, like there's your audience. You could hyper target that specific area. Uh, you could target specific interests. Say you're uh, printing motorsports t-shirts or you're trying to get more race teams to buy shirts from you. Any interest into motorsports or racing or NASCAR or sprint cars or anything like that, you could start to put all of that information in there as a targeted interest, and then your ads are going to show to those people. So, like to reach a specific hyper targeted audience for a relatively low cost, if you're talking like 25 or 30 bucks, advertising cost is next to nothing for buying ads. It makes it accessible. But if you don't know your audience and you don't have that optimized click path working forward, it's just not going to work for you. And you're going to spend money, uh, you know, of, of that you could have actually made conversions on had you set up those products behind it here. Now, when we talked about objectives earlier, the same things apply here. When you're boosting that post or you're buying that ad, because there's two different ways to do it versus boosted posts versus going into the ads manager and Facebook and buying specific ads. Boosted posts are obviously just a post that you're paying to show people in a geographic area or targeted to an interest based on however much you want to spend. 
Now, an ad is essentially a post that you create, but it's private and only shown when you're paying to show it to people. You could set them on schedules or set the, set the budgets to say, oh, I want to spend this much on the weekend because this is when people are on Facebook uh, the most or when my audience is on Facebook the most because they're working during the day or whatever it may be. Uh, you have those controls in the Facebook Ads Manager. I could go on for probably another three hours in a Facebook Ads Manager Masterclass, but uh, I maybe, maybe that we'll save that webinar for another day here. Make sure you're setting clear objectives, whether it be purchases or you're looking for new leads or you're looking for quotes or followers or whatever it may be, because uh, those just always make it make a clear objective in mind uh, and kind of set the, only, the the target goal. Facebook will even tell you, like, based on the spend, you're going to show this to a thousand people a day. So, like, they, they know and they put those tools in front of you. So just make sure that your audience is honed in uh, and don't spend too much upfront until you start to get the hang of it and start to see a little bit of a return. Because I've seen people be like, yeah, I'm going to throw $250 and boost this post. And they're like, why didn't anybody buy anything? It's like, oh, I forgot to put the link in there and I already spent all my money. I can't get it back. Like Facebook will not give you a refund on ads. <laughs> I would say don't even try. Right. Uh, so you could even find lookalike audiences too. You could upload your own email list if you want to do stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you could even put in those new lookalike audiences to get people who are similar brands to you uh, or who like similar brands to you to also see your stuff. So it's a great way to expose yourself to a new audience. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. Uh, sometimes we're able to put the marketing kit on special. I was not able to do it today, but I do want to help you out. Uh, so picking up our marketing kit here today uh, within the till end of day today, uh, it is a $49 kit. If you're unfamiliar with everything that's in the kit, uh, it is just a t-shirt business in a box. For custom decorators or people running their own brand with heat transfers, there's over 20 plus display transfers. You get a free t-shirt to start printing right out of the gate. You get a whole idea book which you see right there that says your business name on it, that is your artwork catalog that you could use to pitch to other businesses and thumb through it. I always say like these days, I've been a freelance designer for 15 plus years. People will come to me and go, hey Dave, uh, I don't really know what I'm looking for, but I'll know when I see it. Like graphic design is not Netflix, man. It's gonna be so wasteful and time consuming for you to do that. If you're going to charge your customer for the design, you're gonna be like, well, I'm gonna spend two hours whipping up some mockups for you. Uh, so. That's going to be about a fifty dollars an hour, so hundred bucks. And they're like, "Well, man, I was only looking to order twelve shirts and try to keep my entire budget around two hundred bucks. You're going to eat half of that, and just doing design. Like, yeah, design's not free, man. So being able to have that idea book, you could actually thumb through all of the artwork that's in the Easy View Online Designer uh, and the best sellers, and then easily customize it for your customers. So that book alone is worth the price of this kit. You convert one customer using that. You also get the color selector swatch book, which I think I have one. Uh, right here. Oh, I did have one right here on my desk. Yeah, sure enough, I got one. Uh, it is all of the actual ink color drawdowns all printed on a fabric material. So you can see what, what all the glitters look like or what all of these blues, the neon colors. You see those goof proof neon colors. You get all of this. This is a $20 value all in and of itself. You get all of those 20 display transfers uh, that you could actually use as like your traveling showroom. And you have that in there. You have an application uh, kind of chart guide. You have some posters that you could put up uh, for those application instructions or to advertise your services uh, as well as a sticker. And then the kicker on top of it all, you get 15 bucks off your next order right away. So that could be transfers that you're ordering. You could order quite a bit of Ultra Color Max, those DTF transfers with no minimum. That's 15 bucks right there. Uh, so just $49 plus shipping. But the special that I want to give to you guys today, that entire 20 mock-up pack that you saw me browse through here in the Easy View Online Designer, uh, that is going to be included here. So all of these lifestyle mock-ups uh, that we've created here at Transfer Express, uh, we're going to put, uh, we're going to email you as a little downloadable zip file if you purchase one of our marketing kits here today. Uh, Mike would, uh, Mike, Mike could probably throw up a link right there to the marketing kit, um, and yeah, that bonus mock-up pack right there. Make sure you click that. Uh, that you click that link right there to be able to pick up this kit and then make sure that you that you click that link because then that's how we know uh, that you're going to be able to, that we'll send you those mock-ups. And we'll probably send the mock-ups out to you tomorrow uh, as soon as we come back in. We'll let it go to like midnight tonight uh, and then we'll make sure that email goes out with all of those mock-ups that you could use for your business, for social media, for your product listings, whatever it may be. And we have them all labeled as to what exact style they are. Like the one that I used earlier, I believe was a Porton Company blank shirt. 
uh, which was labeled a port and company blue, whatever, Tahiti blue, whatever color it actually is, uh, and the style number. So if you want it, you go, wow, that mock-up looks sweet. You want to order it. It's, oh, that's the port and company PC 150 or whatever it is so that you could actually order uh, the blank apparel itself right there. Um, and so, yeah, Mike will put that link right back in the chat section again. I don't have it here on screen and I'm not able to put it, uh, but Mike will be able to drop that, that link to the marketing kit if you want to pick one up. I'm telling you, uh, I've talked to so many apparel decorators uh, that have picked one up and they said, yeah, it's worth it. I sold one kit. It's customized to your business. Your customer does not know Transfer Express exists. But if you're just starting out, you're just starting your business, you could turn around and look like you've been in business for 30 years with the capabilities of a giant, fully successful, capable screen printing shop, uh, essentially by buying one kit. This is how you start your heat printing business. This is how you start decorating apparel. Uh, and it just is an awesome kit to have. Regardless if you're starting out, anybody decorating with a heat press, I recommend it for. So, uh, yeah, to sweeten the deal, this is super exclusive. We don't offer these download packs pretty much like ever. Uh, sometimes I'm able to put the, the kit here on sale, uh, but I want to just I want to I want to give you guys the, the power and the opportunity to just crush your business goals this year. Right. You want to go attract a couple more customers in your in your local area. This is how you're going to do it. You could not charge for artwork. And that's a huge service to add, to offer, especially to a local community, those businesses and go. Listen, we could find a design. Now, if you've never used Easy View Online Designer, uh, I have a webinar that I did like this, went almost two hours, I think, uh, of us diving into all the features and capabilities. There's also a full playlist of just little bite-sized two-minute long videos uh, showing you how to do everything. But I go over to transferexpress.com. If you don't already have an account, sign up for an account, and then it's free to use the Easy View Online Designer. If you already have an account, click order transfers or uh, you know start creating day online designer. There's a whole bunch of buttons that'll link you right over to the online designer. Um, and go in there. Um, so Kayla asks, can you use the mock-up designer tool with your own artwork and download the images without the watermark? You absolutely can. So uh, just like how I pulled the artwork in from the catalog, you can actually upload your artwork into the designer uh, and then pull the mock-up, then upload the mock-up too, marry them together, and then just download them straight from there. So if you don't have Photoshop or uh, Illustrator or anything like that, you could use that, that tool. Or even if you wanna use that apparel catalog, upload your own art or use the artwork in the Easy View Online Designer and be able to do that. Um, Let's see here. Any more questions? Because I'm going to wrap this one up here. Um, and thank you guys so much for hanging out all day today. I know we had a lot to get through, a little bit over the hour of what I was targeting for here today. Uh, but we are here to help your business. Any way that I could help your business out, just let me know. The direct line to me, if you want to talk to me at any time, leave a comment on the Transfer Express YouTube channel. Any video, pretty much any time. Uh, I go in there every single day and answer every single one of those comments personally uh, because I want to see your business succeed. I've been in the business uh, for uh, well over a decade now um, and I've seen a lot of businesses succeed and I've seen some run into a lot of challenges that I've done everything in my power to help them overcome that. I have mad respect for everybody who takes that risk and you know dives into their passion they run that side hustle, they burn the candle at both ends, and then it starts to pay off. And that is so rewarding. And I love to see that. I want to see that for you too, if you're just getting started, or if you're running a full-time business, I want to see you crush your goals this year, regardless of what they look like. All right. So you got this. We're always here to help. Reach out to me anytime here on the YouTube, YouTube channel for Transfer Express, or you could email our, our customer service team that works around the clock, info at transferexpress.com. Anytime you want to call and talk to a real person, uh, you can, 1-800-622-2280. Now, I say anytime. Of course, it's Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> so not anytime, but uh, anytime throughout the day, uh, the business day that you want to talk to somebody, go ahead and give us a call. We have a, a full staff of customer service standing by and wanting to help you out. They want to see your business succeed as much as I do. Everybody here at Transfer Express, from the front door to the press floor, wants to see you succeed. Of course, make sure you're followed and connected with us on social media too. We're always there and engaging with the community. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you. Happy pressing.